What's going on boys and girls, my name is Vik and welcome to a brand new exciting Adobe After Effects tutorial. Hope you guys all are doing well. Today we are going to be creating something which is fairly simple and quick to do, but still something you seem to be requesting. Today we are going to be creating 3D text and stuck those into video footage to make them look real nice. Does it sound good? Alright, let's go and check it out. Alright, so once we are inside Adobe After Effects, let's go ahead and just take a really quick look on what we are going to be building and then let's go ahead and move on to the tutorial part itself. So I have created here a, just a short scene with my some kind of wall footage where I have added two 3D text elements with some shadow and some lighting trying to match the environment. And uh, this is something we're going to be recreating in this quick tutorial. So, you can personalize this effect in however you want, you can make your own process two hours long if you want to really personalize it. I just want to show you the quick method how you can start building your 3D text inside After Effects. Alright, let's go. So the first thing we need to do is to create a new composition using our wall footage base here. You can have this in the link down description if you want to use my footage for the, your training purposes. Let's go ahead and drag this to the new comp button here. Let's go ahead and trim it down so we can see the clip begins here. So let's use the B key to apply our beginning of this frame uh, or this clip and the end key to, to assign where it's going to end. Let's go ahead and trim the comp to work area. And now let's go ahead and use the camera tracking properties. Let's go ahead and use the 3D camera tracker to track all the information we need for us to parrot our 3D text. I'm going to use the tracker track camera here. If you don't see this, you can go up to window and just toggle on tracker. Or you can just search 3D camera tracker up in the effects, effects and pre, uh, presets panel here. 3D camera tracker. Any method works. Let's go ahead and click track camera. I then let you just let it process and do its thing. And once it has done processing, we can see on our footage here a bunch of colorful tracking points now marked on the screen. So what we're going to do here is now get a selection for the area we're going to put some text. And we won't have any kind of depth information here because we have used a tripod here. So After Effects pretty cleverly noticed this. They say no depth from a tripod panel solve. That doesn't, ha that doesn't worry us. Let's just go ahead and take this, this area. And then let's go ahead and right click and create null and a camera. Okay, now we are ready to start working with some text elements. Let's go ahead and select the text tool. Let's click on the screen and let's type in, for example, 3D. I'm going to think I'm going to work with this. And a good tip when you're working with 3D text, some big and bulky uh, sans serif text fonts work, uh, usually work really well. So the font I'm using here is called Gotham. So that is one way to do it. All right, so now when we make this layer 3D, and then here is a really important thing here. When you go to the renderer for this composition, so in the composition settings, we have your basic setting, advanced, and then 3D renderer. Have the render on, on Cinema 4D. It's better than the ray trace that was the old version, but Cinema 4D is the one to use if one wants to do extrusions and three-dimensional stuff. All right, so what we're going to do here now is because we turn this 3D doesn't mean it's actually 3D in like the sense we want to. If we go ahead and rotate this, like on the Y axis, we can see it's just like a, a piece of paper uh, here in 3D. So let's, what we're gonna do is go ahead and, click and use the shortcut double A, like AA on your keyboard. And then we can see the geometry options. And here we can see the extrusion depth. If we go ahead and give that some scaling here, now we see something happen. But the thing that is happening, if we now go ahead and rotate this, we can see now we have some three-dimensional extrusion, which is really cool. All right, so how we make this look somewhat good is that we have to go ahead and create some lights. So what we're going to do is go ahead and right-click here and go to New and New Light. The thing I really suggest you to start with, it, it's just basic spotlights. Let's take a really white one here, like a basic white light. I have it on 100, 90, 50 and have cast shadows enabled that will be important or effectful in the end. So now we can see we're actually getting some dimension dimension here. So by working our spotlight position here and this point of interest here, we can get some pretty uh, different effects here when we move 
this light around so we're going to use these lights to create some sense of dimension for our text here so that is what it's going to do i want to place first of my light here somewhere on the right side something like this something like that and then once I have this pretty much under control, what I wanna do is go ahead and create another spotlight. We can just duplicate this, Control D, Command D, you know the drill. So what we're gonna do here and now is move this to the other side. Let's move this in Z space, a little bit over there. Take the point of interest and put it on the 3D text. Maybe move this a little, a slightly over. Oh, now let's not do that. And what we are going to do is now to place and play with the, the positioning of these lights to ha to give it this really cool look. Trying to mimic uh, the, the lighting in the room. That is something which, uh, what we are striving to do. And once we have played something a little bit around with the intensities of the different layers, you can use the T key to play with the intensity of the, of the light. So what we can do is let's go ahead and enable some shadowing for the, the text element. Let's go back to the double A option here for the geometry options. And let's go to cast shadows. And by default, After Effects always put the text elements to off. So let's go ahead and put that to on. And now we can see if we go to turn on and off, we can see that we are getting some shadowing uh, between the letters. That looks really nice, that's something we want. But we want to add a little, an extra part of dimension here in the text. So one, once we add a little bit beveling in the text, we really give some more dimension to this. Let's go back to the double A, let's go ahead and zoom in to something like 100% here. And we can now turn the comp resolution to full so we can see more of what we're doing. It was 200% here. And here in the bevel style, let's go ahead and choose something like the con convex, convex, however you now pronounce it. And then we can play with uh, what kind of bevel we want. And right now I'm, well, I'm gonna make this extreme so we can see that what it's doing here. So by this, we are getting this bevel and not only gives it some texture for our element, it also catches a little bit of the light and the specularity of the light, which gives more dimension and more life to our element. It's really cool. All right, we have done a lot of good work. Let's go ahead and enhance the dim uh, the, uh, the look of this 3D text a little bit more. Let's go ahead and add a one more light here. And um, the, the light type I'm gonna use here is a really good tip for you because this looks a little contrasty. So look uh, really contrasty and I want to maybe flatten it out just a bit. So let's go ahead and create an ambient light. And the ambient light is basically just, it splats light everywhere. There's no, it's not spotlight, it just, light everywhere so here i like to do is to take the uh, the the color picker tool and take the the general color of the room or the lighting in this room when this was shot and i want to take uh take that so when i now do this ambient light okay it doesn't look so good but let's go to the intensity and let's drop this down something like this i'll go to the second spotlight here and let's take this down. Okay guys, the biggest work, the hard work is now behind us. The thing we're gonna be doing now and next is making this whole thing tie up and making it stuck to the scene. So the first thing we're gonna do is let's go ahead and select all of our lights here and let's parent them to the 3D text. So now when, however we move this 3D text in its 3D space, the, color, the lighting are following and they look pretty good. So now let's go ahead and move this closer to the wall and start making this try, trying to look like it's a part of this scene on the wall with the, with the clock. Alright, so once you have put your text in the place that it looks like it's uh, in three dimensions in the wall, uh, and even if it is tracked with a 3D camera tracker so it moves with the camera, it doesn't seem like it's stuck into the wall. And this is because there is no shadow, because realistically there should be a little bit of shadowing around the letters. Um, because it's stuck to the wall. So let's go ahead and start moving on creating this shadow. 
All right, so once we are uh, when we are working with creating shadows, I like to use duplicates of the same uh, the same layer because and then colorize that and blur that out because if I would work with layers with uh, which which are animated, then the shadow would have the exact same movement that would look really realistic. So um, some people use solids, but then you have to like animate some the solid to evolve in its form to match with animations, and that's just a hassle. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and create a duplicate of this um the 3d text let's take the bottom uh, the bottom one here and or this uh, this one and let's go ahead and uh, give it a new name like shadow just to keep us all organized and nice and then let's go ahead and move it on z in the z space just a little bit further back and normally i would take now the fill effect here go to the shadow and change it to a black color but it doesn't work because this is a 3D, a 3D element in a 3D layer. The fill effect is only for two-dimensional stuff. So what we're going to do, how to fix this, is let's go ahead and delete this. We need to pre-compose the shadow layer. When we pre-compose this, we can see stuff happening. Uh, because now the 3D layers turns 2D, uh, After Effects doesn't recognize it uh, anymore with the lights and everything. But there is a, a very, very quick fix to this. When you go to this comp layer next to it, we have this little cogwheel, this little empty space. When we click and enable this, what it does, it, it goes, uh, then After Effects goes inside the comp and sees, hey, he's using lights, he's using composition. So it, it will copy that back to the, this comp here. So now it's exactly where we left off. So now when we, uh, we will select this, take the fill effect, go to the shadow comp. Now it gets a color. All right, let's go ahead and make that black. Like this, and let's go ahead and fa find like the fast box blur right here, like this, and then we start to give it some blur here. Really find that settle amount, and now this uh, gives the appearance that it's glowing on every side. So what I like to do is go to that comp, and, and then I what I like to do is that I like to move this a little bit to the side here. So we are basically creating this fake 3D look here that we have more shadow on this side because we can't see behind this 3D extrusion of the D. So what I then like to do is to make this an overlay um, to make it blend more into the color of the background. And then let's use the opacity to turn and tune this down a touch. Just so there's slight shadowing so it looks like it's stuck to the wall. Alright, so we can see here, now when we are looking just on our on our little render here, we can see this is looking good, it's tracked well, and this is looking pretty nice. The last thing we can do if you want to, and I really recommend you to do this, is um, having, because now we're uh, doing a 3D model with sex layers, this is really sharp, this footage, if we go up to like 200% here we can see that the text is sharper than the footage itself. So how we can fix this to a little bit soften this up is using the exact same method we create the shadow comp. Let's go ahead and pre-compose this. Let's hit the cogwheel. Let's take the fast box blur to this 3D comp and get to iterations to one and then have something just under a pixel, something like this, just to add a little bit of that uh, tree, um, of the blurriness so it matches the scene okay let's go back to fit a uh, fitting screen and now we have pretty much our finished effect here all right so that is how you create 3d text inside adobe after effects hope you guys did find this tutorial helpful if you did don't forget to crush that like button like never before and don't forget to leave me a comment telling me what you thought of this tutorial Please do check out the social pages for this channel and please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for your time. Hope you guys can see you in the next tutorial. My name is VK and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.